Hotels are doing better this year with June occupancies at higher end chains up 6% from a year ago. What are they doing to regain that business? For that, uh, for the answer to that and many more questions, we head down to Zarbur. And on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, she's standing by with the CFO of Starwood Hotels, Vasant Prabhu. Zara? Yeah, and Matt, we have a lot of questions for Vasant. Vasant, welcome. Let's just begin. I mean, I know you're celebrating the opening of this new W here in Manhattan. A lot of your business, most of your business, is here in the U.S. We've heard so much talk about a double dip recession. Are you seeing any signs of that at all? Well, we're delighted to open a W right next door. Uh, we'll ring the bell today. Uh, we have six new hotels opening in New York. Business in the U.S. was good and seems to be staying good. We hear all the news about a double dip. Fortunately, business is still traveling, corporations are still traveling, consumers are still traveling, uh, and we are not seeing any changes in trend at this point in time. What about over in Europe, where of course we have the European debt crisis in the second quarter especially, are you seeing any signs of uh, an improvement from the second quarter in Europe? Well, we have a large business in Europe, we're all over Europe, we're in London, Paris, uh, Central Europe, Germany. Business in Europe continues to be uh, as good as it is just about anywhere else. It's been a little slower than the U.S. They didn't drop as much. They're not recovering as fast. But it's been, uh, you know, it's been good. Vasan, I want to jump in here because I'm looking at the average two-year revenue growth over the last two years, specifically for the United States. No surprise to see it down about 13 percent. It's been a rough couple of years. You say good. Does that mean revenue declines are stopping and that you're starting to see significant growth? Well, in the first two quarters, we saw U.S. growth up in the double digits. And in fact, in the second quarter, uh, we saw occupancies in cities like New York in the 90s. We have seen rates come down quite meaningfully in the last two years, but now rates are starting to recover again. Uh, we still have a ways to go, and you're absolutely right. We're nowhere near where we used to be in 2007 and 2008, but we're working our way back. Uh, so we are feeling very good about it. How do you maintain, you know, it's interesting to talk revenue and margins, uh, and obviously that's, that's your main job, but how do you maintain the coolness factor? Because the W hotels are famous uh, for being hit places to hang out as well as to, to stay uh, for a room, right? Well, I think you should come down to our party tonight at the W next door, and you will see how cool we still are. Now, it's not for uncool CFOs like me, it's for cool media celebrities like you. Uh, you know, we've got W. W's been around since 1998. Uh, we now have 35 W's around the world. We have five in New York, and they're all wonderful. And this one is going to set a new standard. Um, we just opened an incredibly uh, in, a great W in Barcelona, the W Barcelona. We have W's opening all over the world. So it is a very sought after brand and still very cool. And from what I understand is that you're also looking to expand in places like Taiwan. I mean, Vasant, when you look around the globe, where do you see the most opportunity and where do you anticipate the most growth uh, for um, you guys going forward, let's say over the next three to five years? Right. Well, clearly the growth is most significant in Asia. Uh, we have over 50 hotels in China today. We have 80 under construction. So we'll have over 100 hotels in China in a couple of years, making it our second largest country outside the U.S. We have 26 in India, growing to over 40. We have hotels in Africa, the Middle East, in Latin America. That's where all the growth is. All right, I have to ask you about the growth because one of your growth strategies is actually to sell off some properties and actually use that money to do other businesses. You want to be more of a manager, which is a more profitable business. And the question I have is, why sell assets now when prices for the most part are depressed? No, in fact, we're not selling assets meaningfully right now. If someone comes in and offers us a great price, uh, on a normalized basis, we would consider it. But we're certainly not interested in selling large amounts of hotels right now. You know, we'll wait. All right, one thing I just wanted to ask you about, I found this interesting, a Bell Harbor project that you have going on, a lot of residences in that project. I just want to know what percentage of those have actually sold out or actually you have deposits on and are people coming back for their deposits? Right. Yeah, we have quite a few uh, sold with deposits. Uh, they're not closed yet because the project isn't done. Uh, things are going well. It's a very global buyer base. We're getting a lot of Latin Americans, Russians, etc. Um, so things are going quite well. We're getting good rates. Uh, so it's good. All right, but no deposits coming in, people coming back for their no, deposits? No, no, nobody's really coming back asking for their deposits back. Okay. All right, you got it, guys. So that's it from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. I see you at four.